following is a special presentation of TNN Motorsports. It was a time for celebration, a birthday bash marking 30 years of road racing excellence, and boy, did the teams and drivers of the SCCA's Trans Am Championship come prepared to party. The first five races last year saw five separate winners, tying a record set in 1973. But the battle for the title, King of the Road, came down to three men. Winner at the opener in St. Petersburg, Chevrolet's Ron Fellows looked like the man to beat. But in spite of three other checkered flags, inconsistency plagued his efforts. If he wasn't leading a race, he was watching two Ford drivers battle it out for the championship. Through the first half, it was Dorsey Schrader on top of the leaderboard. The 1989 champion also laid claim to four wins and a consistent performance until he visited the Lone Star State. There, the slightest miscalculation resulted in impounding the unforgiving concrete. Number 12's title hopes were gone. In the end, it was the birthday boy who took the birthday cake. While celebrating his 30th year, Tommy Kendall and team used four victories as pillars upon which to build a championship season. For the third time in his career in the second straight, number 11 finished number one. Today, it starts all over again. St. Petersburg, Florida setting the stage for the second running of the Cash and Carry Florida Grand Prix. Curtain up on the fourth decade of North America's most prestigious road racing series. racing season starts in February, why not go someplace warm? A place where the sun shines, the people smile, and the atmosphere is one of cordial hospitality. Why not return to St. Petersburg, where last year you witnessed the unfolding of one of the premier temporary circuits in the U.S. A place that promised and delivered a spectacular event. Why not, indeed? Hi, everybody. Welcome to the season opener for the SCCA Trans Am Series in 1997. I'm Rick Benjamin. We're here at Florida Suncoast to kick off the year in St. Petersburg. Just like last year, we expect Ford and Chevrolet to duke it out across the entire Trans Am schedule. And just like last year, the season opens at a racetrack that certainly will be a test of both man and machine. And as my color commentator and 1983 Series champion David Hobbs pointed out a year ago, this course resembles a more permanent circuit that certainly tests the mettle of all those who dare challenge it. Right, David? Well, Rick, really, it's a pretty simple circuit. It's just a great big rectangle with a spur, which gives it eight turns, only two of which are left-handers. A very sharp left-hander onto the pit straight, and then another left-hander here on the main straightaway, where they have formed the S's. And this is a left-right-hander, and I call it Eau Rouge, after the Belgian Grand Prix circuit, where they have the Eau Rouge circuit corner there, which is probably the most daunting corner in Grand Prix racing. And here's the same. It's a downhill, very fast approach, a left-hand sweeping turn, and then right on the apex of that, the direction of the road changes, starts going up and sweeps to the right. And last year, this corner caused a lot of problems. Scott Sharp in practice absolutely balled his car up here, bouncing off this wall into the wall over there. What have they done to try and cure this problem? Over the winter, they put all this asphalt down here to try and change the shape of the road here at this very crucial point because that dip was what was causing the problem. We'll have to see how it turns out in the race this afternoon. Now let's join the third member of our team, Derek Daly, who, as usual, is down in the pits. With an update on a new, new rule change for this season, and it concerns how you line up the fastest five qualifiers. Last year, the pole man started fifth in what they called an inverted start. Some people called it a perverted start, did call, cause controversy. This year is different. Now the top five guys dip their hands into the magic bag and pull out what they hope will be ball number one. This may cause even more controversy. It's good and bad. Good for Dorsey Schrader, who practiced only third fastest. But Dorsey, you drew the magic number one. Would you rather be lucky or good? <laughs> I'd much rather be lucky than good, Derek. There's no doubt about that. You know, it's the start at 97. The luck's with us right now. If we keep it through the year, this could be a real good year for us. I hope so. The luck, he says, is with him. Well, the man who actually practiced fastest of all is our defending champion, Tommy Kendall. It might be difficult to get into Tommy because he has the net up. But Tommy Kendall, I know it's early in the season, but you've shown the speed already. Is it too early to even consider a three-piece? Early in the season? It hasn't even started yet, so I'd say it's a little bit early. Uh, you know, the good news is that the car is still running well. It's the same chassis as last year. You know, the all-sport car, if we can get off to a better start, you know, look out. I hope we can uh, come out of the gate with better than a DNF from last year. The car's running well, but this is a tough place, so we'll see. 
didn't start well last year. I think we should remember, in the history of racing at St. Petersburg, a Ford Mustang has never, ever won the race. Kendall could change that today. Rick? Certainly could, Derek Daly. We're looking forward to a great 100 miles around the streets of St. Petersburg. You should get a look at Mike Borkowski. He'll start from the 8-hole here today, his first ride in a Tom Bloyd Ford. Much more to come after this. The Vinoy Resort. Her distinctive architecture has graced the landscape here since the 30s. Listed in the National Register of Historic Places, the Vinoy is one of the places to see and in which to be seen when you're in the Tampa Bay area. And you can correct? bet that most of the 381 rooms at the Vinoy are filled with folks here to see the opening round of the SCCA's Trans Am Championship. The Cash and Carry Florida Grand Prix this afternoon. And as always with the first race, a lot of stories ready for the telling. David Hobbs is doing just that for us in our Trans Am Paddock Report. A very famous name comes into Trans Am this year, and an as yet not so famous name, Mike Borkowski. At least not yet. So Bobby Rahal, Tom Gloy, Mike Borkowski, tell us about what we're going to see this year, Mike. Well, it's it's just a tremendous opportunity to be here. Bobby Rahal has put together a program with the support of Textron and Ford, and it's it's gotten me back in the game after a year and a half to two years off trying to pursue my career. And it's uh, just phenomenal to work with Tom Loy and, and Ford. And uh, right now, it's just we're just getting started with the season. It's come together very quickly. Only had a couple of test days. But uh, I'm going to really learn quite a bit from Tom and Dorsey and Brian and, and hopefully be on the podium and hopefully be standing in the center as soon as possible. Well, Bobby Rahal always felt he owed a lot to his mentor, Jim Truman, Mike Borkowski the same. And we may see him well beyond Rookie of the Year and maybe a lot more. And speaking of Rookie of the Year, you're looking at the car that became Rookie of the Year last year in the hands of John Miller. Now, to get into the championship last year, John had to mortgage his house. But I guess everything went okay because you're still back in the championship. Yes, David, it went real well. As a matter of fact, after winning the Rookie of the Year honors last year, we were invited to New Zealand to run the Trans Am Series down there. We did that as preparation and testing for this year's season. And how is this season going so far? Well, PLC Direct has come on board for a, a good season, and we're heading to the front. Well, that's good to hear, and of course, he's still living in his own house, which is even better. The Rocket Sport Racing Credo, and Chevrolet are going to need it. After 30 years of proud involvement in the Trans Am Championship, their factory cars are out, and really, the ball is in your court, Paul Genelosi. All those Chevrolet fans are counting on you, buddy. Well, I'm going to try to spike it from my court right into the back of Tommy Kendall's head. Well, I know you've got a good chance, because last year, really, you didn't have the results you should have had. A magnificent win at Mossport, and then you had some real bum luck. What about 1997? Well, we made a lot of our luck. We got out of rhythm. We were trying too hard. This year, it's my Arrivederci tour, so uh, I'm relaxed. I don't care. I don't got any factory guys to make happy. We'll be all right. Some wag said, have you been running over a Ford lately? Well, I haven't had a chance yet. I almost ran over Gooding when he knocked the deck off, but uh, we're going to run over as many as we can. Well, there you have it. And that's today's SCCA Paddock Report. The story started already because one of the best teams on the grid here, Bill Saunders' Highway Master Car and Greg Pickett's car, are at the back of the grid. Why? Because they have a rule that says if you change a tire that you've used to qualify, you cannot start the race on it. You have to go to the back of the grid. So Greg Pickett, who was driving the car that took Ron Fellows to victory last year is all the way down the back of the field. This might be. We'll watch and see what Greg Pickett's progress might be as the afternoon unfolds. Take a look at our starting lineup today. As you saw earlier, Dorsey Schrader in car number 12 pulled number one. So he'll start from the pole. John Gooding, his first career fast five from Florida on the outside of row one. On row two, Tommy Kendall, last year's champion, alongside him, Brian Simmo, one of the most improved drivers over the last couple of years. Third row, Paul Gentilosi pulled the number five pill, so he'll start in fifth spot, and Max Lagarde, his best qualifying effort ever in row three. And look at that, number four, Mike Borkowski on row four, alongside Lewis. Move ahead to row five, Randy Ruhlman back with us in his Dodge, the Preform Line Products car, and Don Maluzio from Pennsylvania, the Mannheim Auctions, 31. Last year's Rookie of the Year, John Miller up there on row six, alongside uh, Michael Shea. And the seventh row, Kenny Buff in car number 25, Bob Rubin, one of the privateers from Ohio, the Senwell Chevrolet. On row seven, we have uh, row eight, we have Trent Terry. Alongside him is Rick Rickman. 
And the ninth row, Mike Cepatini in the 47. Bill Eagle is back for another season in car number 17. That's a Chevrolet. Then we have Alan Nadell in the Chevrolet Camaro and Jim McGuire also in the Chevy Camaro. Let's look at row 11 now. Jim Briotti from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. That's car number 42. And Dr. David Rubens here, a local driver from Florida, from Treasure Island in the 54. And, of course, bringing up the rear is Bill Saunders and... Greg Pickett, who both went to the back, and McGuire is right behind them as well. Jim McGuire also changing tires after qualifying. He had qualified only 20 seconds, so he drops back a couple of spots. He'll give him the signal. Time to fire him up in the streets of St. Petersburg. We're glad you're with us for the Cash and Carry Florida Grand Prix. Welcome back to St. Petersburg, the Cash and Carry Florida Grand Prix. Cars out on the course for pace laps. Derek Daly on pit road. With one of the most recognizable names and faces in all of motorsports, Bobby Rahal, great to see you. What brings you to South Florida? Uh, thanks, Derek. Um, well, we've, um, we're running a uh, Trans Am car in, uh, in partnership with Tom Gloy uh, for Mike Borkowski, who's a young guy, I think, has got a good future. And uh, thanks to Textron, they've, uh, they've given us the motivation to go ahead and get it done. And um, so far, so good for us. Is this like a driver development program, Bobby? Uh, I think to some extent, yes. Um, you know, I think it's important that uh, that we, A, give back, and B, that we, uh, you know, help bring along the next generation. And there's without question, there's a lot of good young guys out there that need a break. Fellas, his driver, Brian Hurt, is also here. We'll grab him later. All right, we'll certainly look Thanks, forward man. to that. Ready to go green in the streets of St. Petersburg in a couple of moments. We'll be taking you along for a ride here this afternoon with a couple of our competitors. Paul Gentilosi in that Riso Copier Chevrolet, David. He wants a good run here today. He does. Last year, he qualified exceptionally well. And on the pace lap, he got tapped from behind. It stuck him into the wall, and he was out of the race before it even started. Very disappointing. Let's hope Paul has a better run today. Paul has vowed to have a terrific run here today. We'll be riding along with he and with the defending series champion. In fact, two-time champion Tommy Kendall lines up third. Tommy Kendall's going to be looking good here. He was very, very fast in practice and qualifying, and he likes these sort of street circuits. Every time we go to one of these uh, street circuits, he does so well, this being no exception. He was very quick last year, but we put out with a problem. Into turn number eight, getting ready to come to the start to open the 1997 Trans Am field. The field dominated by Chevrolet. No factory support, but by far the most cars in the field. One Dodge, one Oldsmobile, seven Ford Mustangs. Two of them on the lead row. John Gooding will start outside row one for the first time in his Trans Am career. David, looking forward to a great season. Well, John Gooding, too, has had some great testing times this winter. He's done exceptionally well, so he's looking forward to a good year. And, of course, he is one of the, he is certainly the highest rated local guy coming from Orlando. Green flag, we're underway in St. Petersburg, and Dorsey Schrader breaks out first to lead. Brian Simo and John Gooding side by side into one. Gooding holds on to second. Well, that was Brian Simo. Well, there, John Gooding nearly came together. Well, they did come together going into turn one. Tommy Kendall drops back to fourth then. Kendall showed us last year many times he's very patient with this race car. You've got to be. On these street circuits, this is a 100-mile race. It isn't going to be one between the start-finish line and the first corner, and it's going to be one on the first lap. There's a certain amount of attrition that's going to take place. And, of course, the other thing that is so important on these Trans Am cars is tire wear. The tires are not so much the tire wear, but they just do give up. There you see that O Rouge corner bang off one wall onto the other. I mean, very, very quick. And this is coming to turn seven. Very, very bumpy under braking here. Now, we told you earlier how Greg Pickett and Bill Saunders will start from way back in the field. Greg Pickett is trying to move up through the field. He's driving the car that Ron Fellows won this race with one year ago. It's car number six. This is Saunders in the eighth. He's off to a good start. He's gained several positions here before we complete lap number one. And there's Pickett a little further behind him. So Saunders really marching up through there. I'll tell you, I was amazed. Bill Saunders out-qualified Greg Pickett. Greg Pickett, the most experienced Trans Am driver out here by far. But Bill Saunders put in a great show in qualifying, but of course both of them have to go to the back. Saunders, the owner of Highway Master in Texas, he's got the car that Scott Sharp raced in the series last year for Greg Pickett. They told me they've done some additional development work on the car, and Saunders looks to have a good finish here this afternoon. And Greg, he goes round the number two car right behind him. Greg Pickett's joined on now onto that street. Back to your leaders, Dorsey Schrader, opening up with about a six-car length advantage. Simo is second in the Valvoline car. Gooding is third in the Green Mountain Dew machine as they race through Eau Rouge and up the backstretch on lap number two. Of course, road racing is such a weekend experience that the average spectator tends to think of this is it here, the race, but I mean, so much goes right from the drop of the first green flag on Friday morning because qualifying and practice are so important because it's so difficult to overtake it. And the one thing that Dorsey Schrader wants to see in his mirror is all these other guys do get it out for second spot because the more they dice, 
the happier he is because he's just got a clear road in front of him until they start catching up in lap traffic later on. Got the view for Paul Gentilozzi's windshield. He is sitting fifth in car number five. Gentilozzi making his 112th career Trans Am start to the outside of Kendall for fourth spot. Again, you see the power that uh, Paul Gentilozzi's engine developed. Last year, he had the best Chevrolet engine. But this year, again, showing very strong performance down that straightaway, making some ground on Tommy Kendall, who also has good engine. Now Saunders lined up in 23rd. He's come up to 15th, and Pickett is 16th, and one car is in trouble. Looks to be perhaps Kenny Buff's machine. We'll see if we can get a better look at that car, but that's one of the blue and white Camaros in the field. Dorsey Schrader, four victories in 1996, and he is running very strongly so far in his Ray Bestus Ford out of the Glory Racing Shops. I'm sorry, that's Dr. David Rubens in his only second career Trans Am start. His afternoon apparently will be a very brief one. He ran in this event one year ago, and Rubens apparently coasting to a stop on course. Paul Gentilosi oh, and Kendall Tommy with Kendall some trouble doing an unusual there. thing. Kendall spins coming out of turn seven. Backs wow. it up, he's got it in reverse. This is gonna be a big problem for him. This is gonna drop him way back in the field. Oh, oh, oh. Hope he knows what he's doing. Kendall goes into the groove to get pointed in the right direction. Gets refired now. He's alongside the Thunderdome he stole here. It? Looks like he has. Yeah. So Kendall, who had trouble mechanically one year ago in this race, looks like his event may come to an early end here this afternoon. Oh, well, we don't know what caused that spin, whether he just lost it under braking or whether he got all There is oil well. on the track in that very part. This is turn wow. seven now, coming up to the short straightaway. So Tommy Kendall's car has stopped on the course. Kendall trying to refire it as we take you inside his Roush Mustang. We'll be right back. Welcome back to St. Petersburg, the Cash and Carry Florida Grand Prix. Beautiful weekend weather-wise, some great scenery to enjoy if you get to this part of Florida. We certainly had a wonderful time this weekend. Show you how things are standing. Five laps are complete. Dorsey Schrader has led from the drop of the green. Max Lagarde up into fifth spot. John Gooding hanging on to fourth. Paul Gentilosi's made a move up to third. Here's the rest of the top ten. Rookie Mike Borkowski has gained a couple of spots. Kenny Bump up into tenth. Randy Ruhlman with that dodge in eighth. David, very competitive here in the early going. Everyone wants to know about Tommy Kendall. He did spin. He is not a lap down. He's sitting 23rd. Let's find out what happened. Here's Derek Daly. I'm here with road racing crew manager for Roush Racing, Dan Biggs. Well, the chase for the three-peat championship just got a little bit harder. What happened? Seems like you never make it easy. You know, uh, somebody lost an engine out there, and Tommy got in, it spun out, and it wouldn't start. He got going, but we're last, you know, and not, not a great place. But we'll be all right. You know, maybe we'll stop halfway through and make it interesting, put tires on this thing. We'll see what happens. Now, I heard you on the radio discussing a mechanical problem that he was concerned with. What was that? Well, I think he was a little anxious there on the lap before that. He went down the straightaway, and he said it popped out of fifth gear. It's all new stuff in the transmission, so I can't believe it. And maybe just didn't get in all the way. We'll see what happens here. We, we'll be okay. So a possible mechanical problem, but also the fluids that we believe may have come out of Lewis's car and Rubens. There was an oil and maybe an antifreeze solution dropped on the racetrack. Lewis's car out, transmission problems. Dr. David Rubens out as well. David, we saw this scenario a lot last season. We did, and what a typical racing mechanic there, blaming his driver for not putting prop to fifth gear. <laughs> Honestly, Daniel, as if a driver could possibly do something silly. Hard to imagine, isn't it? It is hard to imagine. So Tommy Kendall will line up for the restart. Shotgun on the field. Dorsey Schrader will bring him to green as they come up the hill out of Eau Rouge, heading toward turn number seven. Now you see that red and yellow stripe flag on the left of the picture there on their right. That, of course, means basically it is an oil flag. Obviously, they use it for other fluids and, of course, debris, as they say in NASCAR. This short straightaway is where Pit Road was located one year ago. They moved it to the opposite end of the course. We'll show you more about that as we move along this afternoon. A change, too, in the Trans Am tire rules. David and I have spent a lot of time talking about the hot weather here this weekend and whether it will affect tire wear. We'll get to that in a couple of moments. We're ready for a restart, though. Schrader and Simo, the two teammates from Tom Gloy Racing, will restart one and two. Jen Losey's got his Chevrolet up in the third spot on this restart. Old Gentilos, he was strong all through practice and qualifying, and he's in a very, very good spot now. Just uh, those two cars in front of him. Of course, Dorsey Schrader just loves having Brian Simmer right behind him, his own teammate. Mike Jennings drops the green. We're back underway. Big shuffle as they head to one. Gentilos, he grabs second. Dorsey apparently missed a shift. He's back in fifth. Wow, Dorsey Schrader gets aced out there by Paul Gentilosi, and along comes John Gooding, who got shuffled from second back to fourth. 
Brian Simo is up there as well. There's the 83 car, too. Hung, rang, hanging right in there. Dorsey Schrader has dropped way back. He had a horrible problem on the restart. Tommy Kendall, meantime, slicing through the field, restarting 23rd. He's making pass after pass on his way to the front. He's got a lot of time to do it. So Kendall has knocked off four or five cars already right after the drop of the green. He's got a lot of time, but he's also got a long way to go, too, because don't forget, with a single file restart, these guys have run up to turn seven. He's still coming out of turn four. So Paul Gentilosi, who crashed last year on the start, is leading as we move into lap nine here at St. Peter's. Ryan Simo is second. We look out the back end of Gentilosi's machine on the short straightaway. Simo alongside. Look at the third place car. John Gooding, Simo, and the five car of Gentilosi in a lead change. Ryan Simo, your new leader, getting by on the inside. All right, Simo driving like a man possessed. And here comes John Gooding, too. Another person that uh, was a real middle of the pack runner before us this year. He's suddenly really come to life. Looks like he's going to take a position away from Gentilosi. Great racing up front. Max Lagarde is fourth. Let's go to pit road, Derek Daly. Incredibly, fellas, they're changing the drive shaft on Dorsey Schrader's car. Now, I'm shocked that it's such a quick change, but he knew what it was immediately. They had the parts ready for him here. It has taken probably a minute and 15 seconds, but it is so costly in the championship chase. So the two drivers we thought would be the main contenders for the title have had early troubles here in the first race of the season. Well, Dorsey Schrader, I thought that he and Tom Gloy are so focused now. I really have a lot of faith in them trying to win this championship. Tommy Kendall obviously is going to be really tough, but Brian Simmer putting on a great display this afternoon. Whoa, there goes Paul Gentilosi locking up the front set. I'll put some flat spots on those tyres, and there's a long way to go yet. It'll be pretty rough from now on. Would he have his brake balance adjusted incorrectly? He, yeah, but he can adjust it too inside the car. He can put a little bit more on the back now. He can do the Gentilosi sitting second. Now we take a look out at Kendall's machine. He's sitting behind Bob Rubens, number 23 right now, as Kendall knifes his way back up through the field. Remember that Dorsey Schrader will restart deep in the field. Kendall sitting 13th. Ruman is 12th. This is the lead group. Simo in the 22 is out in front, followed by Gentilosi, the black and red Chevrolet Camaro. That's a Rocket Sports chassis, Paul's own race car. We take a look out at Gentilosi's car ahead at Simo, the leader. Wow, uh, Gentilosi and Seema, very, very different lines as they exited turn two there. There's that sharp left-hand turn three, the only left-hander here other than the S's. And, of course, this constant right-handers here, you've got six right-handers here, I would have thought would have made the left rear tires on these cars pretty warm, and they're all chosen the 430, which is a medium compound. I would have thought somebody would have put 600s on that left rear. They've cut the number of tire compounds available in Trans Am down to only two this year. In years past, there was a 210 very soft tire, the 430 medium, and the 600 hard. As you say, David, everyone's gone with 430, so we may well see some tire troubles here today. The sun has come up. There are the two. Picket cars, Bill Saunders. Here comes Tommy Kendall now in hot pursuit. Kendall is up to 12. He's gained 11 spots in two laps as he moves by one of the slower cars. Kendall with clear racetrack in front of him now. Dorsey Schrader, meantime, still on pit road as they try to affect that drive shaft change. Much like NASCAR, much like Kart. The goal is to run for points. It's a long season, so Dorsey needs to get back out and, of course, continue. There's trouble in the pits, though. Bob Ruman's car has caught fire. He's on pit road. Crew members around, something smoking. We see firemen there. They're going to dump some water on the back of the car. The Sedwell Chevrolet. Ruman was running 12th earlier. He was right in front of Kendall a few moments ago. Looks as though the fire has been extinguished. Nobody's running. Ruman is out of the car. He looks like he's okay. These cars burn gasoline, so you can see the fire. This is not like an IndyCar situation where methanol that does not uh, show flame does burn occasionally. Ruman out of the machine. See Mark Strickland there for Paul Gentilosi's team over to see what assistance he can lend. Back out in front, still Brian Simo in the Valvoline car out of Tom Gloy's shops. Gentilosi second, Gooding in the green car there is third. Back a little further, Max Lagarde. Car number 83, riding fourth. His best effort so far in Trans Am. Lagarde, his second season, running very, very nicely here in the early going. We've completed a dozen laps at St. Petersburg. Max Lagarde, of course, as always, these younger drivers looking for some sponsorship. Comes from the Illinois area, just outside uh, Chicago, uh, doing extremely well. The GT1 winner in the last year's runoff. So he's looking for some more money this year. Going well. Brian Simo is out in front in car number 22. Jen Losey sits second. We're a quarter of the way home. We'll be right back. Back to St. Petersburg. Brian Simo is still your leader. Jed Losey about 12 car lengths back in second. Gooding is third. We're in the early going here this afternoon. Some wild action on pit road. Tommy Kendall had spun. 
Dorsey Trader has dropped the drive shaft. They're still trying to change that. We had fire a moment ago on pit road as we watch the leaders come down the main straightaway. John Miller, last season's rookie of the year, running fifth. And look at this. Mike Borkowski is sixth, but Bill Saunders and Greg Pickett have come to seventh and eighth. Tommy Kendall, the defending series champion, has just cracked the top ten, going by Randy Roman's Dodge. Kendall, after restarting last of the field a few moments ago, we ride with Kendall for a moment here. He has just nailed the cars one by one, and he's going to be up in the hunt here, David, I think, very, very quick. Yeah, he'll get right back into the hunt, but Brian Simo and uh, Paul Genelosi are going to be tough to catch. As we watch the three leaders come to turn seven, let's go to pit road, Derek Daly. Well, fellas, one of the scariest moments for a driver is the potential of fire. Bob Ruman, that just looked pretty scary. What happened? Uh, I think I hooked the exhaust pipe on the corner of the wall when I was trying to pass the guy. And I got under him, and uh, I felt the car jog over, and then the exhaust got loud. So problems. problems. And I'm tired. <laughs> you can see, fellas, he's just got to catch his breath to do that indeed after that kind of situation we're glad that bob rubin is okay dorsey schrader is back on course they've gotten that drive shaft fixed to david he's lost to many laps he's being shown 23rd well of course he unlike uh, tommy candle is basically is in a no hope situation but there's still a lot of laps to go so with some attrition he could still finish uh, maybe in the top 15 which is going to give him uh, valuable points as the year unfolds because really the battle is going to be i think between him and and uh, tommy candle this year uh, obviously, you know, Brian Simo, Paul Genelosi, John Gooding, uh, Greg Pickett, I think they're all, oh, there's Brian Simo pushing his way there past, that's the car of Kenny Buff, I think. Lap traffic starting to play a part now, Simo in the Valvoline car still leading Genelosi as we ride with him second, they go by the Chevrolet Corvette of James Christ, pull him up onto the main straightaway here, Simo with a couple of car length advantage. Talked to Brian Simo yesterday. He says he thinks this is the year he'll win some Trans Am races. Looks good so far, but this is a new situation when he's actually leading a race. Absolutely. <laughs> he's going to be like one of our contestants yesterday who won a race in the pit lane. said, where do I go? <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul Genelosi, who has won several races, won at Mosport Park last year, is hounding Simo here in the early going. We've got 16 laps complete. Dorsey, by the way, five laps down. We saw Dorsey Schrader a moment ago. He lost five laps of the drive shaft problem. He ain't going to make up five laps unless these guys all have major problems. He'd be lucky to make up one of them. Why would a drive shaft malfunction like that at the start of the race? Kind of, well, of course, it is bumpy here. This is the sort of circuit that breaks drive shafts. Accelerating over these bumpy surfaces is the sort of thing that gives them some pretty severe stick. And obviously, the thing must have been just slightly faulty and, and obviously snapped. Simo hanging on in the Tom Gloy car. He's really carrying the water for Tom Gloy's team at this point because their lead driver, Schrader, had that problem. Jed Losey running a one-car effort this year. The Riso Copiers team all over the back deck lid of Simo's Ford. So a good Ford Chevrolet battle. And John Gooding with his first career Fast Five sitting third. Having a good race, too. And the three of them are really pulling away from the rest of the field. Tommy Kendall up to ninth right now, and he's pounding Greg Pickett from behind trying to get past him. Saunders is seventh, Pickett is eighth, Kendall is ninth, and they're very close together. Back up front, Genelosi taking a look from his roof camera ahead at Simo. Now, Genelosi, see, got in that car really sideways there, coming around that double apex turn one and two. That puts a tremendous amount of heat into that left rear tire. So these guys at this stage, assuming we don't have another big caution period, they're going to have to give these tires a little bit of rest somehow. And that uh, turn number four that leads to Eau Rouge is also off camera, I noticed. I took a lap around here in a streetcar this it's, morning. These roads are very crowned here. Obviously, when it rains here in Florida, it rains like heck, so it's got to run off the roads, which is great for rain drainage, but it's lousy for race cars because you fall off into the edge of the road, and once it starts to slide down that adverse camber, it's tough to hold it up, and that's what sets up wheel spin, and that's what burns out those tires. I think it'll be interesting to watch Simo as he gets to more lap traffic. It seemed to be that in the lap traffic, Jen Losey was able to close in, didn't get by him this time. It's only two or three years since Brian Simo was the lap traffic. Now, of course, the boot's on the other foot, and he's going to be swearing at these guys to get out of his way. What do you think you're doing out here? Don't you know I'm going fast? <laughs> Coming up on the Ciappatini automobile, the 47 car, Frank Ciappatini in the hunt today and Simo getting by him on the inside the 47 a lapped car Genelosi moves by as well so the two leaders with clear racetrack once again tell you traffic to get through traffic you, you've got to be aggressive you've got to be fast but at the same time you've got to be cautious John Here's Miller John has spun last year's rookie of the year looks like he may have a tire down Miller was running in the top five in fact is fifth 
He gets the car refired. Ooh. Now he's really pointed in the wrong direction. He pulls to the inside. Now there's traffic coming down, so he can't back up. Has to wait a moment while some of the front-running cars get by him. The PLC Direct Chevrolet. It's so vital in situations like this not to stall it, because these race engines, when they get hot and they stall, they're absolute pigs to start again. Borkowski trying to go inside uh, him, helped him around, it appears. That's what happened. Mike uh, Borkowski, the rookie driver we met a few moments ago on Tom Gloy's team. In the Textron Ford there with uh, Bobby Ray Hall as his mentor. So it's going to be interesting to see how he gets on this year. I think he will do extremely well. That was a battle for fifth spot. Borkowski gets the position. Ryan Simo, meantime, goes by Peter Shea in the Entrepreneur Chevrolet. Gentilosi takes a look inside, decides not to try it. This is the turn two, three, and four area of the street course here at St. Petersburg, coming up to where you would enter Pit Road. Simo hanging on to that two car length lead. Let's head back to Pit Road. Derek Daly. I'm here with Bill Fingerlow, team manager for Dorsey Schrader. Bill, we know it was a drive shot. Any indication as to why the part broke? No, it's it's one of those freak things. There's a snap ring that holds a plug in. Apparently, the snap ring came out. I don't know if it broke or came out, just came out of the groove. Now, Tom Gloy, your team owner, was just here. Asked you, did he get hit? Who did he mean get hit? Uh, Mike Borkowski, another driver in number four car. Apparently, he's got some contact on the front. Okay, so let's watch for Borkowski also, because they're still panicked down here with Tom Gloy and Fingerlow. They're very concerned. You can see the huddle here. They're extremely concerned about Borkowski. Well, Borkowski was, I think, the hitter, not the hitty, as we saw a moment ago. Brian Simo is your leader. We're at St. Petersburg to open the SCCA Trans Am season. 20 laps complete. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the streets of St. Petersburg. The SCCA Trans Am Championship. Rick Benjamin, David Hobbs, and Derek Daly. Here's Mike Borkowski. We take a look at the Textron Mustang. A lot of body damage to that car as Tommy Kendall closes in. It didn't look much like uh, or, or like much of a bang when he ran into the side of... Uh... John Miller, but obviously it was enough to do a lot of damage to the front there. They're going to have to whip that bodywork off there, otherwise it's going to cut that tire down. So we expect to see Borkowski into the pits here shortly. Tommy Kendall, meantime, really on the march. Kendall sitting eighth according to timing and scoring at the moment, and right behind Borkowski, who dropped back to seventh. We told you that the contact resulted from Borkowski trying to take fifth away. He misses the corner. Because Borkowski's lot of, lost a lot of downforce now in the front, which is so vital to these cars, and of course it makes it, it affects braking tremendously. Lack of downforce. There's Bill Fingerlow, uh, the guy who's the crew chief for those three cars. Obviously, one of the extremely well at the moment, leading the race. But Borkowski, I would think, will head to the pits and have that looked at. Borkowski down the main straightaway all alone. Smoke coming out of that corner of the car too. Could that be brake smoke or is that tire rub? I think it's just the fiberglass of the front fender there rubbing on the tire. Now, these cars do have modular front body work. They could peel that nose piece off and put a new put one a on. Put a new one on, right. Borkowski, a driver many think will be a great star in this series, may only be here a year or two because Bobby Rahal has him under contract now. Kenny Bupp on pit road already. Here comes Borkowski onto pit road with 21 laps down. Derek Daly, is he in sight yet? He's not in sight, but he's definitely on the way. Rahal is here on the pit wall also having... A look he sees at the top of the pit lane you see Bill Fingerlow try to tell him slow down take it nice and easy Borkowski was out of a full-time drive since 1993 but he formed a relationship with Bobby Rahal and suddenly it all came together when Rahal got Textron together with Tom Lloyd to put this program together for Mike Borkowski but a difficult start so they'll change tires on the car on the left side. They'll also put the new bodywork on the front. David, the left side tires may help him as he tries to come up through the field. Now remember, these cars are lapping at about a minute, 10 seconds here, so you can make a pit stop and not lose a lap. You can indeed, and they decided not to put a new front on it. Maybe they didn't have a new front for it, but he's going to go out without that, which is going to make a lot of difference to the cooling and to the aerodynamics of that car. Meantime, look at how Jed Losey has closed right up on Brian Simo as we move close to halfway at St. Petersburg. Gentilosi sitting second in his Riso Copiers car. You're riding with Paul. Now we look back at the leaders. Brian Simo in the 22 car out in front. Well, of course, now you're into the tricky part of the race. Now you've got traffic. And this is one of those deals where the luck sometimes goes your way and sometimes it doesn't. But it's one of those things that some drivers are better at working with. On the other hand, it's going to be very exciting to see how Brian Simo uh, deals for the first time ever uh, as a leader on a tricky circuit. It's not an easy circuit. Walls both sides. I mean, there's nowhere to go. If anything goes wrong, 
and he's going to have to fight his way past all these cars, caught up again with John Miller, who was spun around earlier on by Borkowski. Remember that Miller was in the top five when he tangled with Borkowski and spun. Your leader, Simo, has to get by him, Derek Daly. Indeed, here with Bobby Reha. Well, Bobby, uh, unfortunate, but the learning curve is varied when a driver like Mike Borkowski goes into a class like this, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I think he just, you know, got a little close under braking. Too bad he was doing a good job, but, uh, you know, he'll get there. He's, uh, this is a tough, uh, tough debut, track like this. And Bobby Reha will always tell you, mileage. Well, of course, he's absolutely right. It is a tough place to make a debut on. First of all, he's never driven one of these big cars before. He had a few laps practice at another short circuit and then thrown in right at the deep end here. These circuits are so difficult because they are so precise and if you want to go fast, you've got to be aggressive. If you're aggressive here, it goes wrong. I mean, you're straight into the wall. Brian Simo now has opened up several car lengths again on Gentle Ozzy. Good battle for the top couple of spots. Good battle a little further back as Miller jumps on the brakes. He'll go sliding right off the end of the corner again. So John Miller, the fourth, out of Johnson City, Tennessee, in his PLC Direct Chevrolet. With more problems this afternoon. He was up at the top five. It's a shame for John Miller. Top two cars remain the 22 of Simo and the five of Gentle Ozzy. A little further back, we've got a dandy building as well. Tommy Kendall has shown fifth. Greg Pickett, who started back at the back of the field after that tire change, has risen to fourth in the car that was raced last year here by Ron Fellows. Interesting point here, too, is that Brian C. Ooh, coming up on the 77 car. Trent Terry's Oldsmobile Trent Terry's right Oldsmobile there. Oldsmobile right. These two guys, uh, Brian Simo and um, Paul Genalosi, are definitely leaving uh, John Gooding now as Pickett is coming under the clutches of Tommy Kendall. That's where Andy Ruhlman's dodge directly in front. Ruhlman had spent some time on pit road, so he's not on the lead lap at this point. Pickett sitting fourth. Kendall is fifth. John Gooding running by himself a little further ahead in third spot Kendall's teammate see how Pickett and Kendall deal with this we're not quite to halfway yet Probably close to lap number 30 Randy Ruhlman's lap machine uh, still kind of holding things up as Pickett will look for a way by here on the main straightaway there's Ruhlman waving them by very slick looking car that one is it looks super fast it looks kind of like uh, Richard Petty's car from the about the 60s it's got a real <laughs> good slope to the back Tommy Kendall also gets around him as they come into that turns one two and three area Right. Kendall still is fifth now. Pickett is fourth. Pickett with a nice charge through the field in the Autolink Chevrolet. 25 are complete. It's still Brian Simo's race. Battle for the lead at St. Petersburg. Paul Genelosi goes inside. Brian Simo to take over the top spot heading through one, two, and three. David Hobbs, this has been a great battle between these two drivers. It has been a great battle. I have a horrible feeling that Paul Gianelosi is going to pull away from Simo down. And Simo might have been holding him up. On the other hand, it has been pretty even, Stevens. It could be that Brian Simo is going to make a comeback and come back. Now, Gianelosi has the big experience advantage over Simo. Derek Daly, how does Mark Strickland feel about this? Well, believe it or not, things are not that rosy down here because they are concerned about a possible misfire. Mark, tell us about that. He radioed in a few laps ago that he dropped a cylinder, and it doesn't sound right when he's going by. So it doesn't even sound right. So if it's on seven cylinders, they must be seven really good ones. Now, David, there are times when having a little less power can help you because you have a little more opportunity to make the car hook up. Is that the case on a street course like this? I wouldn't have said so, no. I really wouldn't because you need all the power you can possibly get down this straightaway here and down the other straightaway where the old ruse uh, turn is and you really do need all the power you can get coming off these corners you don't have to use it all but at least you want it there when you do want it we've noticed too the car is belching some flame out of its right side exhaust would that be an indication of an ignition problem it could be ignition right exactly gentle Ozzy, meantime holds on to the top spot as we close in on halfway brian simo right behind him you think now that Tom Gloy has called the Simo on the radio, perhaps and said, just bide your time. They may have problems in the five car. Good be. The other thing, too, I still feel they're going to have to conserve these tires. There's a bit another 30-odd laps to go. As you can see, the sun's out. The track temperature's probably well over 100. The air temperature's about 85. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to take its toll, especially on that left rear tire, like this one here. Right here, that left rear now. As he accelerates out of there in second gear, takes a lot of stick. John Gooding sitting third in the Mountain Dew 4, doing a great job. Started on the outside of the front row today and doing a nice, nice job bidding for his best ever Trans Am finish. Tommy Kendall has moved by Greg Pickett and come to fourth spot. He's got a long way to go to catch the leaders. Our scoring monitor shows Kendall still 17 seconds behind Paul Gentilosi, so that's a good uh, more than a straightaway on this racetrack. Yeah. 
Good battle for the lead. Simo tried to go inside Gentilozzi there and couldn't make the pass. One of those things you've got to be so careful about because you can so easily lose just a lot of momentum apart from losing some body work like Mike Borkowski did. And uh, so you can caught up in traffic there as well but now so is Paul Genelos as he goes around turn four now Genelos is going to want to get past that lap car before they get to the S's and last year's Ray Bestest rising star of the season Max Lagarde is out of the race we saw the car stopped on course they're waving a caution there Lagarde was up in the top five for a while he's seventh right at the moment but that won't hold up the next time by start finish because Lagarde apparently has gotten into the wall he's got into the wall pretty big time and he's well down the track there from the S's uh, unless he had a huge tank slapper all the way up there, it's about a quarter of a mile, but uh, it's just before you get to turn seven. Gentilozzi and Simo one and two. They've got the caution out in that part of the course, but not a full course caution. See Dorsey Schrader racing by Don Maluzio's black machine, and then your two leaders, the five, the red car of Gentilozzi, the white and blue machine of Simo, the 22. Looks like we will go full course caution here in just a moment. We understand the pace car will be coming out. Those are your two leaders. Back in third is Gooding, Kendall and Pickett make up the rest of the top five here at St. Petersburg. What's been a Chamber of Commerce weather week? It's been beautiful. Greg Pickett now in fifth spot in the Cytomax Chevrolet. Derek Daly's on pit road. Indeed, here with Gary Young, crew chief for Greg Pickett. Well, it looked like a big gamble at the start, but it looks good now. Yeah, we're running up towards the front, starting at the back end. We're waiting to see what we can do here in the last part of the race. Any problems reported? Well, we slipped an alternator belt about 10 laps in, but everything should be okay. Obviously, plenty of charge in the battery if he doesn't need that alternator belt. Well, David Hobbs, Greg Pickett has put in a great drive so far. We've got some debris on the course. We'll have a caution that probably looks like a brake disc maybe off of Max Lagarde's car. That could have been, of course, what happened. He might have just clipped the wall down there, which broke the hub, and then, of course, he slid all the way up to turn seven. But what a break this caution flag is, of course, for Tommy Kendall mm -hmm. and Greg Pickett. This is going to bring Tommy Kendall. That 17 seconds you were just talking about. Now it's going to be down to just a few seconds behind Gentilozzi and Seaman. And you can cool your tires as well under the caution. So Lagarde is out of the race. We're under caution at St. Petersburg. We'll be right back. Welcome back to St. Petersburg. Beautiful weather weekend. Temperatures in the middle 80s. A lot of folks enjoying the beach as part of their trip here for the Cash and Carry Florida Grand Prix. Not that we've had time to do that, David, but it's... Many have been able to take advantage of that anyway. Paul Gentilozzi hoping to spend some time in victory lane, if not at the beach. He continues to lead, and we are just crossing halfway under caution for the Max Lagarde incident. We believe that Lagarde might have hit the wall and lost a hub off the car. He came to a stop on the course. Nice runs for several drivers whose names we haven't seen at the top of the list earlier. Gentilozzi and Simo 1 and 2. John Gooding has been third for a long time, on his way perhaps to his best ever finish. Let's check in pit road, Derek Daly. With a man who is beginning to force a little bit of a smile here, Dan Binks, road manager for Roush Racing. First of all, tell me about Kendall. You're back in business again, it looks like. Yeah, I mean, we caught back up. We're back up to fourth. We're in good shape. You know, uh, he's, Gooding's right in front of him. And uh, Simo looks like he's hurt his tire. So, I mean, we should be in good shape for a podium finish. Uh, being teammates and Tommy Kendall being the leader, will Gooding make it easy or difficult? Any team orders? No team orders. Gooding's doing a heck of a job. He's been running third all day. You know, if Kendall gets to him, he's not going to hold him up any. But if he's faster than Kendall, he's just going to go for it and try to be the best for it. They're looking good. David, I heard you mention earlier on about the tires. They are on fourth Hurties, which is like the medium compound. Dan Bink said there is no concern whatsoever with the tires. And yet he also just said that Brian Simo had lost his rear tires. So obviously there's still ways of handling these tires. Some people do it better than others, but uh, Dan Bink seems to think that Simo's having trouble with his tires. He also has the same set of tires, 430. The 430s are the softer of the two compounds available now. As we mentioned a few moments ago, Trans Am rules have taken away one choice, the very soft 210 tires for the 1997 season. So the drivers really have only two picks they can make. Paul Gentilozzi, we saw him lock up the brakes a couple of times earlier as well. We're just past halfway. A lot of miles to be run in this one yet. Yes, a long way. And um, it certainly ain't over till it's over. Tommy Kendall is right there with the leaders, right where he wants to be. He should be able to get around uh, John Gooding. And then, of course, he's going to have to get around Simo, who's going to be tough. And of course, Paul Gentilozzi is going to be very tough. Well, like Gentilozzi's Greg car looks good. Greg Pickett back there in fifth spot. I think he's going to have a good finish as well today. In last year's winning car, of course. Derek Daly is on pit road. Indeed, with another big name of IndyCar racing, the man who almost won the Laguna Seca IndyCar race last year. But Brian, what brings you here? 
Well, I'm here checking out uh, checking out the Trans Am racing and supporting uh, Mike Borkowski and Textron, who's also one of our sponsors. How's your uh, winter testing been going? Uh, very well. You know, it's uh, it's nice to be out here in the sun and getting a little uh, get a little race weekend in early. Uh, next week, of course, is our first race, and uh, can't wait to get started. And I think, fellas, it's fair to say with the performance he put on at Laguna Seca, it's not going to be too long before Brian Herder wins his first IndyCar race. Wouldn't think so at all. Great crowd on hand this weekend, the Cash and Carry Florida Grand Prix, and more action from St. Petersburg in a moment. And we're back in St. Petersburg, the Cash and Carry Florida Grand Prix, the SCCA Trans Am season opener, as we show you some of the beautiful scenery in this area, Florida's Sun Coast. We're back underway. Brian Simo in second spot. There's Kendall Maluzio. Mike Borkowski, Greg Pickett apparently didn't get off to a very good start. He's dropped back quite a bit. Yeah, Greg Pickett and Bill Saunders both have seen him drop back there. As we come back to John Goody now attempting to get around Brian Simo again. He let him briefly at the beginning of the race and look right behind John Gooding. Tommy Kendall has come back right to the dead last. On that restart, Bill Saunders, the teammate to Greg Pickett, moved his car number eight up into fifth spot, but he's quite a ways back. Pickett getting shuffled back to sixth. Malusio, the black 31, he's a lapped car. Here's Kendall as they come up the side, the back straightaway, really through a rouge and heading toward turn seven. Kendall moving right in now on Gooding's deck lift. This is where Kendall spun earlier on that fluid that was thrown down. A very bumpy approach to that corner over the railroad lines there, <laughs> under braking for turn eight. This is a very crucial corner because turn eight leads you onto the main front straightaway, and it's at the end of this straightaway going to turn one where all the overtaking action takes place. So it's incredibly important to come on there with good speed so you can maintain it all the way down and try and capitalize on that speed at the end under braking for turn one. Paul Genelosi with less than a second lead over Brian Sebo in the white car. Gooding and Kendall are third and fourth. Got a Chevrolet. Remember, no factory Chevrolet support this year. Gentleman's doing it all by himself, and he's leading the show here at St. Pete. Paul Gentleman's, of course, got his own uh, engine shop at Rocket Sports. And last year, he had the cream of the crop of Chevrolet engines. And there's no doubt about it, he does have strong engines. We heard Mark Strickland say he thinks it's on seven. It certainly doesn't seem to be on seven. It may not be running perfectly, but it certainly looks pretty strong to me. Sounds like it may have cleared up, if nothing hey, else. I'll tell you what, it's not on seven cylinders, because if it is, the rest <laughs> of us will go home. Trouble for Mike uh -oh. Borkowski, Bobby Rahal's new driver development candidate. He has gone off course once again. Borkowski's afternoon may have come to an early end without that front body work. We'll find out more about that in a couple of moments. So Borkowski, who was up into the top five briefly in the early going, has spun and hit the tire barrier. Looks like that's in uh, turn two, perhaps, as your leaders come back up onto the straightaway. Yeah, because with no downforce, you know, on the front end, it certainly doesn't help your braking, and it certainly doesn't help turning. Gentilosi, the leader. Let's find out more about those engine problems. Derek Daly. Again with Mark Strickland, team manager. Mark, is this a ghost or is this an engine problem? I'm not sure right now. He's he's sure there's something wrong in the motor. He thinks it's probably a broken rock or the way it's acting, and it it sounds hoarse when it goes by here. But on the good side, he says it uh, hooks up better now. <laughs> so there's an advantage to having a misfire. It's what they call traction control. That's right. <laughs> Break a rocker arm and you're in business. Well, Company, we'll see. Companies spend millions to make engines go down to seven cylinders when they come <laughs> off corners in the rain for traction control. He's got his own now. Paul Gentilosi, a veteran driver, one of everybody's favorites in this series. Only three career Trans Am victories, one of them last year in Canada at Mosport Park, hitting for his fourth win in this series. This is his 11th year. Trans Am competition. Brian Sebo back in second as we look out the back of Genelosi's Chevrolet. Looking into the front of Brian Sebo's four day, you can see a great piece of paper stuck in his air intake. Now that we've already said the air temperature, there you see yeah. it. The air temperature is about 85. Uh, that could cause him a problem with heating or overheating. Simo in second spot of the Babylon car, drilling right back up on Genelosi's deck lid. Trying to get a line on the five car, make a move perhaps, get the lead back. He held it for a while earlier, getting close here through the essence. He is getting close, taking a tight line through there this time. Look right behind Gianlozzi now as we look out the back of Gianlozzi's car, leading through the streets of St. Petersburg here until that turn four. Gooding, meantime, and Kendall, they haven't been able to come up and challenge at all. I'm surprised, actually. You're absolutely right. Tommy Kendall hasn't even uh, challenged his own teammate, John Gooding. Through those fast S's, bouncing up the road to turn number seven. Now, maybe the Tommy Kendall's playing a waiting game here and really conserving his yeah. tires. 
We talked so much last season about how Kendall had that ability to come from the back to even make a tire change and come slicing back through the field. These races are only 100 miles long. Generally, if you have to pit, that kills your chances. But Kendall showed us last year that's not always the case. Absolutely. He's, he's, he's the fast master coming from the back. I, I wonder whether he and Dan Binks rehearse this sort of stuff. Just, just to keep us all on the edge of our seats. Certainly has done that so far today. Jen Losey and Simo right behind him. Hasn't seemed to cause a problem for Simo to have that paper in the grill. Well, not yet, but I mean, it certainly is there. It's a big piece of paper. Um... Kendall went by a lap car there as he went through the corner. Still sitting back and forth. We take you for a ride in the All Sport Mustang. Around that tight turn uh, three there onto the pit straight. That pit ball there sticks out just a little bit. Ah, more traffic here. Held up Paul Gentiloz at absolutely crucial time there, just when he really wanted to be laying into the gas pedal down the straightaway here, into these fast S's. He was balked momentarily, which is allowed. Look at this, Simo he's got two cars well. ahead. Now he's got two cars. This is going to close him up. Peter Shea in the car out in front of this little pack. James Christ in the blue Corvette moves to the side, let the leaders go through. Shea now will have Gentilozzi blow by him down on the inside in the corner number eight. And that gives Simo, that holds Simo up. And that holds Simo up. So that's just tit for tat. That happened to Gentilozzi coming up turn four and happened to Simo coming up turn eight, which has allowed John Gooding now to get right up with Simo. Use the draft. Is he going to outbreak him into turn one? He's going to try. Not quite. Too far back. Just a little too. Pulled out just a fraction of. Where's Tommy Kendall meantime? He didn't get up in the mix at all in that last sequence. I thought he might do, and they were all held up there by slower traffic. That's normally the time. And see, Tommy Kendall now has got held up by that same traffic, and it's been held up badly as he comes down to turn four. Peter Shea with the car that Jamie Gallus drove last year at the Trans Am Championship for the Buzz McCall stables, the Chevrolet factory machines, but Peter Shea not on the pace of the leaders at this point as they work through Eau Rouge. So there you can see it as he's coming out of turn six. Jellos is almost up at turn seven in the braking zone. So the front three actually pulling away from Tommy Kendall, which is a bit of a surprise. Now Kendall has cleared the lap car, so he'll try to reel in the three leaders as we work down onto the main straightaway one more time. Turn eight, the right-hander, up onto the fastest part of the racetrack here at St. Pete. You see Jellos in the red car, then the three boards of Simo, Gooding, and the defending series champion, Tommy Kendall. Let's go to pit road. Derek Daly will stand by and talk for a moment with Dan Binks, the team manager for Roush Racing. We'll get to that in just a second. Binks talking to his driver on radio. Let's go to Derek. Um, Dan, any concern with Tommy dropping back? No, just traffic. We got it, got up in the S's here, and you can't go two by two, and he got stuck out by a slower car. We're all right. He lost about a second there, but we'll be right back on him. Will any time come when you'll ask John Gooding to let him go by? Uh, we'll let John make that decision. He knows if Kendall's faster. If he is, that's what we'll do. You know, Kendall and Gooding are good buddies, and if, if Jonathan thinks it's necessary, or I mean, here's Jonathan's chance to be on the podium. That's what we want. Uh, we might have a case of job security here, fellas. <laughs> John Gooding knows that Tommy Kendall has helped him tremendously. In the meantime, the Oldsmobile of young Trent Terry laying down a lot of smoke. We presume that might be oil smoke. We'll wait and see if a caution might fly here at St. Petersburg. Closing in on 40 laps. Jen Losey is still your leader. Simo is second. Gooding and Kendall next in line. And Greg Pickett has taken his Chevrolet back to fifth. We'll be right back. Welcome back to St. Petersburg. Beautiful Sunday afternoon for an automobile race. The Cash and Carry Florida Grand Prix of St. Pete. Glad to have you with us. Rick Benjamin, David Hobbs, Derek Daly to bring you our coverage today. No change out in front. Paul Gentilosi, the only Chevrolet among the Fast Five qualifiers. He's your leader. Started back a little deeper in the field today than he would have liked to back in fifth. 42 are complete. And look at the rest of the top ten. Bill Saunders and Greg Pickett have moved up solidly as well. Your two lead cars opening up a couple of car lengths on John Gooding, who is third. Let's go to Pit Road, find out what happened to Mike Borkowski. Here's Derek. Indeed, one of the big stories this afternoon has been the Textron car with Mike Borkowski. Mike, what happened out there? Well, the reason we're out of the race, I think we had a bit of a, a gearbox problem. Started early on, maybe about eight to ten laps in, I started getting a little bit of a vibration. I radioed into the crew, but the, the car was... And then it just kind of real quickly got worse on that last lap. And then it just was kind of a loud noise and, and too much smoke, so we were out of it. It has to feel good to have somebody like Bobby Rahal take you under his wing. It's, I mean, it's just a dream come true. It's a tremendous opportunity. Um, it's an it's a it's a amazing turnaround for my career. I've been out of a car for about a year and a half now. 
And he's given me the opportunity to sit back on game on great people and hopefully use this as a stepping stone to move on from here. Move on from here. Do you want a quick update, fellas, if you can stay with me on the uh, the paper story with Mike Finger, or Bill Fingerlow? Bill, let me just grab you, Bill. Any concerns with the... Tom Gloy said, hang on. So there is obviously a bit of concern. I'll get back to you. All right, we'll find out what's happening. That's Mike Lozano, the engine builder for the Gloy team, talking to Fingerlow right there as they watch the 22 car circulate with that paper stuck at the air intake, David, as you pointed out quite a while ago. Hasn't seemed to bother him in a while. We're up to 44 laps complete, 16 to go. Yeah, it's been there now for about eight to nine laps, hasn't it? But it's, uh, it is a big piece of paper. That's the only thing that worries me just slightly, because uh, it depends. Not all of that grill is all intake for the radiator. There's intakes for other things as well. So it may be that it's not affecting the engine temperature too much. Uh, the top of the road course like this is a high ambient temperature. You're revving the engine a lot. You've only got a bit of speed down this front straightaway and down the back straightaway. Otherwise, you're going pretty slowly. And of course, you rely on the air going through the radiator, unaided by a fan, to, to cool the engine. Here goes Tommy Kendall. Goes around the outside the of his outside. teammate, John Gooding, to make the pass and move up to third. So Kendall, who went to the back of the field after spinning on lap one today, is up to third spot. He isn't going to find Brian Simo. It's easy to get rid of that, <laughs> I tell you that right now. He's got a ways to go just to catch Simo at this point, but Kendall, the defending series champion, fast qualifier. He had eight poles last year, eight fast qualifying efforts, although he didn't start first all the time because of the inversion that was in effect last year. The fast five qualifiers. Excellent qualifier, wonderful race driver, very good in traffic as we've seen today. He's terrific in traffic and he's also terrific on this type of circuit. There's just something about him. And every time we go to a new one, like went to Reno for the first time, we went to Minneapolis for the first time, boom, right at the box. He was quickest all weekend. He's staggering on circuits like this. So Kendall sits there. Let's find out more about Ryan Simo on that paper in the air intake. Let's go back to Derek. Again with Bill Fingerlow, who we're just pestering here all afternoon. Bill, I know there is a bit of concern with Brian's car. We're just we're just watching the temperatures. If there was a yellow, we'd probably stop. In fact, that's what Tom Gloy said. If there is a yellow, we will stop. Now, here's another update. Greg Pickett, I don't know whether you've seen that, but he also has a large chunk of paper in the radiator grill of his car. He's only running at 220 degrees, so they said no problem. Top two cars continue to be Genelosi and Simo. There's Kendall in third, Gooding in fourth. We'll take a little look back now. Quite an interval back to Greg Pickett. In fact, Pickett is about 13 seconds back of the lead four cars, but a very nice drive from the Autolink snack bar number six. And there Mr. you can Pickett. see all that paper that's in his grill. At least it's uh, not color coordinated because it's blue, which doesn't really match that <laughs> red at all. But Poor uh, planning, I'd say. At 220, that's not too bad, but it's not far from 220 to 230, 235, 240, which is too much. Greg Pickett at the moment done it, doing a very nice job. Had to drop to the back of the field on the start. He had to change tires after he and Bill Saunders, his teammate, both blistered tires yesterday in a late session here. Let the car slide out there, putting the power down. The car was getting just a little bit tail happy, not too bad. But all that sliding around always puts some temperature into the tires. Brian Simo is definitely moving back from Genelosi. And, of course, look who's catching up with Brian Simo. Working lap 48 of 60 here at St. Pete. Top cars, Tommy Kendall is up to third. We take you back up on top of the All Sport Ford. Kendall with uh, Brian Simo in front of him, and Simo looks like he's heading down pit road, so Kendall moves to second. Simo comes into the pits. Derek Daly. Right after our last report, Tom Gloyd, the team owner, jumped down into Bill Fingerlow's face and said, bring him in right now. This car will not finish the race. So this is probably a decision that's made over the championship run. In other words, rather than just win today, they want to get at least get points. It fell out of the grill. Yeah, they didn't they even have to pick it, it up. It fell out of galling. I mean, that just is so irritating. And look at the lead now. The Genelosi has got over Kendall. Kendall's going to have his real work cut. There comes Kendall. He's got two lap cars between himself and the Riso Chevrolet of Paul Genelosi. So Tommy Kendall's got his work cut out with just about, what, 15 laps left to go? Coming up almost 10 to go here in just a few moments. There's Kendall second now. Third is Gooding, his teammate right behind him. They work by Frank Ciappettini in the 47 car. Going another lap down to the leaders. Kendall second spot. Maybe a chance if there's a late race caution. Genelosi didn't even know if he was going to run in the series this year until a short time ago. This has to be a real boost to their team. Well, absolutely. This is the sort of thing that does boost the team. John Gooding there in, in, the, in the Mountain Dew car there in third spot. What a day he's had. What a week. What a year he's had. 
Uh, ever since the spring training started, their private testing, he's been going very, very fast. He's got a brand new car. He feels the car's a big part of it. I think that John Billy himself has responded well. He's got a lot of confidence. Boy, he's shown it this weekend in the top five, well and true in the top five, and now in a good, solid third spot. Jed Losey, your leader, working by the 17 of Bill Eagle. Lap car, Peter Shea's car back there, too. Go inside the Jed Losey machine. 12 remaining. He's out in front by quite a distance. The SCCA Trans Am Championship season opener. Tommy Kendall second. After starting at the back of the field, after spinning early, he has sliced through to come back right behind Jed Losey. About an eight-car length difference now. Less than 10 laps remaining. Take a look out the back end of the Roush Mustang of Kendall. Nine to go, in fact. John Gooding is third. We look at the rest of the top ten. John Miller has come back to tenth, although he's been off the course twice. We see Miller's car at the bottom of the screen. Here are your leaders. Now Kendall moving around side, alongside James Chris's car, the number 19. You could say, according to that little beauty shot we've just seen, that he's reeling him in. I would think so. Brian Simo back on course as well. He is fifth right now, and he's a lap down. Great picket. And Simo, the first cars, one lap down. We only have four cars on the lead lap, the way things now appear. Derek Daly on pit road. Just a quick update. Mike Lozano is right behind there with a the black hat. He builds the engine for Brian Simo. I said, what was the determining factor? He said, I went above 265 degrees on the oil. He said, that's too risky. So as we saw Simo stop, the piece of paper just blew out of its own volition. Simo right back on the course. But he is sitting, as we say, one lap down now in fifth spot. It's 36th career start today. A lot of top fives last year, but a lot of top tens, I should say, but has yet to uh, get to the podium. But he really looks strong today. He was driving brilliantly early on. Great start. Uh, had a tremendous tussle with a much more experienced, experienced driver in Paul Genelosi. And really did look uh, very, very strong. Now, of course, the thing is, can Genelosi hold off the charging Tommy Kendall? John Miller's car, the 64, moving aside. Letting the leader, Jen Losey, go through down low. Kendall, meantime, will have to contend with Miller's car here through a slow part of the course. This gives Jen Losey a boost. It does give him a big boost. Yeah, bad, bad timing for Tommy Kendall. Huh? Kendall gets by now. Gets by Miller. He can size up Jen Losey a little more, but the laps are really drawing to a close. 54 complete next time by. Let's go to Derek Daly. Just show you something here, fellas. This is the uh, magic book on Tommy Kendall. And over on this side here, four seconds, 3.7, 3.3, 1.7, 1.5, 1.3. He is on average three tenths to five tenths of a second quicker than uh, Paul Gentilosi. So it's only a matter of time. Now, David, although it's a street circuit, the back straight there is very, very wide, unlike the street circuit. So there's passing room down there. There is passing room, of course. It also is uh, flatters to the sea because all of these corners here are approached by these big wide straights, and suddenly the corner is very narrow. So you have to be uh, extremely careful. I'll tell you what else is becoming a problem too now. That is as they go west here, as they come around turn four, they've got some real nasty sun in their eyes. Leaders coming by lap traffic. Beautiful shot here as we look back at a lot of the Trans Am field. We saw Brian Simo off to the side. I would suspect that paper did some damage to the motor. He's down on power. He's going very slowly, so I didn't, you're right. I'm sure it has done. But look how close Kendall is now to Jan Lozzi. This is within overtaking distance. Coming up should be five laps to go the next time by. Jen Losey has led virtually from the drop of the green here today. He started fifth, got to the front very early. Kendall, remember, started back from 24th on that first restart. He's come to second. We're going to have a dandy, I think, here, David. I'll tell you what, if, if Jen Losey's end has got a dodgy rocker, it's sure to take the Oh, and he spins! Oh, no, Jen Losey has lost it. Oh, Jen Losey no. spins in turn John, seven. And John Gooding goes past. Jen Losey trying to find low gear and get it refired. He gets started again. Gets pointed in the right direction. So Paul Jen Losey, under pressure from Kendall, spins in turn seven and loses the lead. What a mistake to make. I mean, deep as he was right there. Let's see it one more time. Into the corner, into turn seven. You can see it just starting to go there. Now that early on he had too much break on the front, I think he's readjusted it and put too much on the back now. That's exactly where he crashed last year. Well, he... Yeah, crashed. He actually got run into on, on the pace lap and pushed off, but which was terribly unfortunate. But that was uh, that was a bad error on his part. He's going to live to regret that. But he had too much brake on the, the front at the beginning of the race. You mentioned that when he lit up those front tires. Now he's now he lit up the rears. I think he must have turned that old balance bar just a frack too far. Mark Strickland not looking too happy about it. 
Oh, damn. Strickland, I'm sure, talking to Gentilosi on the radio. Less than five to go, and Gentilosi now shuffled back to third spot. He did come out in third behind Gooding. So Gentilosi all by himself on the track. Greg Pickett quite a ways back in fourth spot. So. Yeah, I think he's in pretty safe, uh, safe spot there, but uh, how disappointing because he's had a great afternoon. Now, as we've talked about the softer compound tires, everybody on 430s, it's warm now and warmer than it was at the start. What would he have done to his tires by spinning them? Well, you know, just a few laps to go, whatever he's done, he probably flat spotted them pretty badly, but it probably wouldn't hurt them badly enough to uh, slow him down too much. So here we are. Looks like 1996. Tommy Kendall, four wins last year in the season championship. He's come from the back of the field to lead, getting by Genelosi after that spin with just a couple of laps remaining. Big, one of the other big losers today, of course, is Dorsey Schrader. Uh, Dorsey was, uh, you know, in this championship to win it. And, uh, of course, he is going to be coming home now in, what, uh, 12th, 11th place. He's up to 11th. Dorsey has made nice progress. He's still five laps down to the leaders. He lost all five laps with that situation with the drive shaft coming off the car. But Dorsey's done a great job today. Bill Saunders, who with his teammate picket had to start at the rear of the field. Saunders is sitting fifth. He's about, uh, oh, uh, let's call it 10 or 12 seconds behind the boss, Greg Pickett, but he's in great shape for a top five. And this is his career best, we think, uh, which coming from the back is obviously very commendable, especially on a difficult circuit like this, where overtaking and care are at an absolute premium. Bill Saunders hasn't had a top five since 1992 when he was a World Challenge competitor, and he was very strong. In fact, he had five wins in 1992 in World Challenge, moved into Trans Am in 93. He's had several top tens, but this would be his first top five finish if he can hang on. Your leader is Kendall. Three laps remaining here at St. Petersburg for the Cash and Carry Grand Prix. I want to tell you, too, next event for the Trans Am Tour goes to Phoenix in the month of April, April 16th. You'll see that one live here on TNN Motorsports on Saturday afternoon. John Gooding is second. Peter Shea car right here. He is a lap machine. The Entrepreneur Magazine number, Chev uh, number 70, we should say. That's a Chevrolet. We take a look at Randy Rubens Dodge. Rubens done a nice job today as well. He's shown eighth right now. And car number 50 is first Trans Am start in quite a while. Kendall up the back stretch. Coming up that turn seven, which proved so disastrous for Paul Gentilosi two years in a row. First lap last year, four laps to go this year. That's that the guy we've been talking one. about, the Ray Bestas car of Dorsey Schrader, 11th now after changing a drive shaft. Drive shaft broke very early in the race. He got five laps down. Hasn't made up a lap, but he's done a nice job. Big disappointment for Dorsey Schrader because uh, with 13 races in the championship this year, uh, to get too far behind on points is going to be tough to make him up. Although last year, of course, he also led for such a long time. In fact, about to be lapped again by Tommy Kendall. Um, he led for such a long time and finally lost it with two races to go. It is a long season, 14 races long. 13 will remain after today. Your leader's Kendall. A couple of laps to go. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Cash and Carry Florida Grand Prix through the streets of St. Petersburg. Tommy Kendall, your leader. Dorsey Schrader five laps down directly in front of him. The white flag will wave over Kendall. This time by as they come through turn eight, the right-hander. Up through the gears, long straightaway here at St. Pete to the start-finish line. All Tommy Kendall has to do now, basically, keep it between the guardrails. John Gooding, his teammate, is second, about three seconds back as we see Kendall take the white flag. Gooding back there in the other Mustang, a little further back in the field. Well, Roush Racing had a tremendous last two years. Champions uh, two years in a row with their driver Tommy Kendall. Uh, obviously getting the 1997 season off to a cracking start with a first and a second. But there is one more lap to go yet, so it can all go wrong yet. And there's lap traffic in front of Kendall with Dorsey Schrader behind him. We see Brian Sebo back there. Sebo, of course, off the pace after that overheating problem. Dan Binks, team manager for Roush Racing, taking a look at his driver Kendall and his other driver Gooding right behind him. Two-car effort this year for the Roush team. Throw Rouge for the final time. Some slower cars in front. Kendall can drive conservatively now. <laughs> if I were him, I'd be driving incredibly conservatively <laughs> at this stage of the day. He's a master of that, getting by one of the slower machines. Here comes Kendall up through the gears one more time. We see the Saunders car, James Christ. And there is Kendall in the all-sport four. Around turn eight. Made straight away for the final time. Great drive this afternoon. Tommy Kendall about to take the checkered flag and the victory. The first win of 1997. Tommy Kendall wins the season opener in the streets of St. Petersburg. Let's go to a celebrating crew. It's Derek Daly. I'm here. Dan Vick.
Binks, Dan Binks, I know, I'm sorry, enjoyed the celebration, but talk about it. hero to zero, back to hero. A remarkable day. What a team! I'm telling you, at the beginning of this thing, I thought, oh my God, this is a hard way to get going. Kendall just kept trugging and trugging. Jonathan, steady, steady, steady. First and second for Ford. We love it. Take it, Rick. So the victory to Tommy Kendall. Teammate John Gooding comes home in second spot. Great way to start the 1997 season. David Hobbs, Kendall with a big leg up on the championship. Well, I can't think of a better way for anybody to start the championship than that. And for Dan Binks, of course, it's a great thrill. He is now in charge of the road racing for Jack Roush. Uh, Max Jones is going on to other things. And so uh, great for, for Danny Binks. Great for Tommy Kendall, of course. After last year, got up a dreadful start here. And, of course, fabulous for young uh, John Gooding, who comes from just down the road in Orlando, so he's a Florida boy. Uh, great for him to do so well here. Paul Gentilosi, after the spin, gets refired. He comes home third. We'll talk to the winner when we come back to St. Petersburg. Welcome back to St. Petersburg, the Cash and Carry Florida Grand Prix complete. Tommy Kendall, the winner. Gentilosi, who led so long of this race, so much of this race, finishes third. John Miller comes home in 10th spot. Go to victory lane, Derek Daly. With the new look, Tommy Candle here, wife Caroline beside him. Tommy, if you'd written a dramatic script, you couldn't have written it better than this afternoon. Well, I thought it sucked at the start, to be quite honest with you. But I was, there was a ton of oil down here, and I saw those guys, and I said, oh, good, they're going to crash. And I was the one that spun. So, uh, you know, the good Lord was smiling on us today, uh, let us kind of flex our muscles and tell us a little patience along the way. And a great start for the championship. But here's another big story down here because Paul Gentilosi was so close for so long. Paul, the star of the show, but you don't get to take the champagne. Well, Derek, you know, you hate to give it away. And that's exactly what we did. We, uh, Tommy's a tough racer, and I knew he was coming. We'd lost an exhaust rocker arm on lap 10. And so we were way down on straightaway. I was trying to hustle it through the corner, got in a little deep, and locked it up. It was entirely my fault. Great car. <laughs> I got to say about the engine, I mean, the water was 260, the oil was 310, and it just kept running. But I gave it away. You gave it away, fellas. He'll get another chance, though, in Phoenix coming up in the month of April. That'll be round two of the 1997 SCCA championship season. We've got coverage for you all season long, in fact. Tommy Kendall wins the season opener. John Gooding comes home in second for Jen Losey. The disappointment of the day, but still a third. Great run for Greg Pickett's team. He gets fourth. Bill Saunders comes home fifth. We'll see you next time from Phoenix. For Derek Daly and David Hobbs, I'm Rick Benjamin. Thanks for watching.